So we know that bacteria tends to grow better in uh, liquid solutions. So when you are trying to uh, isolate bacteria, to coax them to grow, uh, it is preferable to use broth instead of uh, solid agar. Okay. Uh, so we have an approach, uh, the most probable number approach that we can use to enumerate bacteria using a broth method. Okay. So what does this, how does this work? Most probable number. So if you have a sample, okay, let's just say you you diluted your sample, okay, uh, so this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, okay. minus 4 and minus 5. So this is your original. Then this is a broth. Okay. So you are diluting it using a suitable broth. So after incubation you realize that it becomes turbid. But the turbidity is only for the first three tubes here but not for this. So what is the most probable number for the bacteria in your original sample? So the most probable number will be probably between this and this. So most probable number will be more than 1 times 10 power 3 but less than 1 times 10 power 4. Okay. So that is the basic principle of most probable number technique. So if you do most probable number, if you do a single cube most probable number, then your estimation is uh, quite, uh, covers quite a large range. So this is an estimation. Okay. So how the scientists overcome this is by doing multiple tubes, which means you have a 3 tube M MPN, 3 tube MPN. 5 tube MPN and even 10 tubes MPN. Okay, so at every dilution, 10 tubes, every dilution. Then from there, you will get uh, different results of uh, positive tubes. And then based on statistical distribution, uh, distribution and uh, probability, they are able to estimate the most probable number okay, from the MPN results. So why do we do MPN? Okay, so MPN allows us to use broth. So we know that broth is a better medium for uh, stress organisms. So in the food industry, okay, most of the microorganisms are already stressed through uh, due to the harsh conditions of the food processing. So therefore, a broth approach is, uh, is advisable over the solid agar approach. Okay. However, MPN method is just an estimation okay, and based on probability and statistics. Okay. Therefore, the, the results usually vary over a wide range and do not give uh, precision as much as as good a precision as pore plating and spread plating. It is also uh, tedious and laborious okay. because if you re imagine the the number of bottles that you have to prepare, the number of test tubes that you have to prepare in order to um, cal carry out the MPN. And also, you have to have a method of detecting bacterial growth. 
Okay, so turbidity is one of the ways. So sometimes they use pH indicator. So when bacteria is growing in the broth, it may have it may produce acid and change the pH of the broth. Sometimes you can also see uh, placement of Durham tubes. Okay. Durham tubes inside the MPN uh, test tubes. Okay. So what these Durham tubes do is they capture gas that may be formed by the bacteria growing in the broth. So these are all indicators of bacterial growth. You need indicators of bacterial growth in order to determine which tube is positive and which tube is not. Okay. So blending and homogenization is very important. Okay? Because the if the dilution is not carried out properly, if homogenization and dilution is not carried out properly, then the results that you obtain as you carry out dilution and inoculation into your MPN tubes will not be uh, accurate. Okay. Okay, so how do we so let's just say if you okay so MPN is very useful in water testing food microbiology okay and when samples have to be large. If you have a sample here and you dilute them, uh, you carry out a 10 times dilution. And then further inoculate the inoculate into your MPN tubes. So this is a, a three tube MPN. If you were to obtain a result of three, uh, two, zero, okay, which means three tubes here positive, two tubes here positive, and zero of the tubes here positive. So from here, your M your MPN code. is 3, 2, 0. From your MPN table, you can obtain the concentration. You have an MPN table in your practical schedule. Okay. So 320 is 9.8. Okay. So 320 is 9.8. So 9.8 over the middle middle set. So the middle set here is 10 power minus 2. So over 10. So this is the amount of inoculum in the middle set. 1 over 100. So your result will be 9800 MPN per according to the formula 
according to the table per meal. Okay, so the MPN code, once you obtain your MPN code, you refer to the table, and from the table, you obtain the amount of inoculum in the middle set. That will give you your final MPN per meal. Okay, so that is how. So what are the rules? Let's just say, if you were to do an M3 tube MPN, so, okay, you have your sample here, you diluted serial dilution 5 times, so this will be a 10 minus 1, 10 minus 2, 10 minus 3, 10 minus 4, 10 minus 5, okay? Then let's just say you get results like this, 3, 3, 2, 0. So from here, you select the highest dilution giving all the positive counts, positive results, and successive 2 dilution. So your code will be 3, 2, 0. Okay. So from the earlier result, or from the earlier Reference, we know that 320 is 9.8. So the middle tube is here. So the concentration is 9.8 times 10 power 3 MPN per mil. Okay. So the rule is select the highest dilution giving all positive results and the two successive dilution. Okay. So it is not 332 but 320. Okay. So what if what if you don't get any what if none of the tube is all positive? So you select the Lowest dilution with the highest number of positive tube and then two successive dilutions. So the code is 210 and the middle tube, middle set is at 1 over 100 concentration. Okay. So if you get a, a count like this, okay. if you get tubes like this, results like this, so you will select the highest dilution giving all positive results and successive two dilutions. However, if there is a positive tube at a higher dilution than the three set chosen, then you should increase the number here by 3, 2, 1. So the code is 3, 2, 1 by bringing this over to this tube. If you were to uh, if you so for this example even if there are negative tubes at a lower lower dil dilution you choose the lowest dilution with all positive tubes first and then two successive uh, dilution so it's still 320 okay. for this example if all tubes are positive you choose the the tree set on the higher side okay the tree set with the higher dilution 
Whereas if all are negative, then you choose the set at the lower dilution. If for this example, you choose the lowest dilution with the positive tubes and successive two dilution. Okay. Whereas if you have an example like this, you place the one, the single positive tube in the middle. So the code for this will be 0, 1, 0. Okay, so this is how uh, most probable number tubes are calculated.